Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together, and today's video is a rundown on the release notes. So let's just dive in. First off, release notes are getting a total name change makeover, which is long due and coming because most release notes, like the versions, make no sense. So instead of arbitrary release numbers, they are switching to the year followed by the month and then the version numbers inside of there. So this release notes is 2022.1, the year and the month. I'm a little late on this, but that's okay. Hopefully this is still useful. So that's what they're doing for release notes. In the future, you'll know exactly when one came out and you'll know what happened inside of there. So with that out of the way, let's actually jump into what they changed in Game Maker. So they've done a couple of really cool things, one of them really important. So let's talk about that first, and that is their collisions change. So before they were doing collisions with uh, integers and they were exclusive here. And the example that they have in here is in your bounding box for a 16 by 16 sprite, it was zero to zero and 15 to 15. So that's top left to bottom right. Now it's actually gonna be in floating point numbers. So it's 0.0, to 16.0. What this means is it's gonna be more accurate. It should clear up a lot of the bugs that you may have encountered from here and there because they had to actually round the collision numbers and for bounding boxes and such because they were not floating points, they were just integers. Now, with these changes, you might now discover some new bugs inside of there. So they have an option to enable the compatibility mode for collisions. So if we jump into our game and you go to game options and go to main, you'll find it here at the bottom, this little checkbox, collision compatibility mode. And what that means is if you've got an existing project with a lot of collisions in it, you might want to just maintain the way it's been working until you're done with that project. But if you're ready to upgrade or start transferring that old project to how collisions work now, you can uncheck this, click OK, and now your game is using the new floating point collisions. So you're gonna discover a few bugs here and there that you might need to, to figure out and sort out, but if you need to go back, you can do that or you can start that process of upgrading. So I'm really excited to see just how big of a difference this makes. I know collisions are a big deal for a lot of games and a lot of people struggle with them. Hopefully this helps solve some of those issues. Uh, I don't know how much it's going to help or how much things will change, but getting more precision in our collisions I think is only a good thing for that. The other big thing they've added is the ability to apply filter and effects to individual layers here. So if we come into our room, before if you wanted to add a filter and effect, you could add it right here as a layer in your game. But if we added it, it would essentially affect every single layer in your game that it was above. So let me see if I can show you. So here's like a distort filter and it changes every single one. So if I bring this down under here, my instances, you can see my bird and the score over here, which you can't actually see, but the score in the bottom corner there, they are no longer distorted. But this is a little cumbersome in my opinion and not great. So what they've added is the ability with the inspector to actually add an individual layer effect to a layer. So if I select my instances now, and I come over here to the inspector, which if you don't see, you can go to Windows, Inspector, and it will bring it up, and apparently you can have more than one, which is not at all what I want. So now, down here, Filters and Effects, I can add a Distort filter, and it's only going to affect this individual layer. Really powerful, really, really cool. And you can actually see it, you know, as it runs, you can change your color inside of here. If you wanted to, cha to change the tint, you can do, let's see. I think this edge distort one is pretty cool looking. It makes it all like an outline. So these are some really cool effects and they say specifically that this is version one. They're going to add the ability to do a lot more in here to add more power and effect and controls. Right now you can only have one filter and effect per layer in your game. It might be cool to be able to do more, but 
this is, I think, a really good start. Those filters and effects are a lot of fun, and they do a lot of really cool stuff in there. They've also added the ability to start doing some of that in your code, so you can apply layers and effects through code, through GML, into your game. So if you want to look more on that, you can actually check out some examples they've got here on the release blog post. And they've added more inspector support as well, and then the collision changes. The other really cool thing coming up pretty soon, which is not in this one, but IntelliSense codenamed Feather. So this is only in the beta, but if you're interested, you can download the beta and check it out. It's gonna have a lot of really cool features. I might do a video if there's any interest on the upcoming features for GameMaker. It looks really powerful and really cool. But besides those things, of course, they've done a lot of other things. When you download and install this, you will need to re-sign in, which is kind of annoying. The installation takes a little bit longer. They've removed uh, remote worker installation. They've sped up compile time by changing how images and sprites are compressed. So you should see up to 50 to 80% faster load times if your game is sprite heavy, which is pretty cool. And then they've got tons and tons of bug fixes here as well. So hopefully if you were having issues, they fixed them. If not, report them through the bug editor, try out these new features, and let me know what are you most excited about that they've added here or that they might add in the future. Remember, they have a roadmap. Everything they're going to do, they've planned out, so make sure you check that out as well. I'd love to hear from you. But for now, that's all I've got. So keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.